Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara. I'm a fifth generation farmer in California. I grow grain crops with my dad and I planted my very first vineyard last year and I'm also a chicken lover. Beautiful day here in Northern California. I was gonna do office work today because it's pouring and one of our landlords called us that a Home Depot truck got stuck on the side of one of our fields. So beaver towing to the rescue. See how this goes, this should be fun. What's wrong? Rain, you don't like the rain? <laughs> you don't like the rain? Melly? What are you guys doing? Dad decided to take his little blue. Hopefully it'll be enough. Let's find out what we're working with here in a minute. We're just pulling in the yard. I actually thought this truck was gonna be stuck somewhere else. So it's either not stuck anymore or it's stuck in a really weird spot. Um, we have this like pad we built for our hay and I thought that's where he was stuck on the side of the field But he looks like he's stuck in our yard like in our equipment yard. So that's weird right there That's where I thought he was gonna be But he's over here like Pretty much in the middle of the road But he's definitely stuck because the guy's standing out there Good thing is he's not loaded because I was curious, you know, if he was gonna be having a heavy load, but pretty much empty, except for a little tiny thing. So we'll see. I don't think this is gonna be hard to get out. He's not sunk like I was expecting, but we'll see. All right, got everything chained up. Just gonna try to go straight back. I don't think it's going to be hard. Roll in a little, but not too bad. Gotta put his tire straight, come on. I should have, it's too late now, I should have made a line right all the way along this high dirt. Can you do it in the spring? Yeah, but I'm just, you know, to get that water to not. Get them slide off the end. Cause then once I know what it is, I can block the number. truck to tow. He has no tow hooks. That's crazy. Now we're on the back side. Couldn't make the turn. Gonna try again. Apparently he doesn't have anything on the front of his truck to really pull. So it's gonna be interesting. Round two. Even my pants are getting muddy. Ew. Oh boy. It's a little wet, guys. A little wet. Yay. 
Might as well just pull him all the way now. Really nice guy. It's not hard to help people like that when they're so nice. I wore my sloggers today. I wasn't expecting to work outside, but they're not as tough as my red wings, but at least they're uh, pretty much rain boots. There he goes. Gravel road the rest of the way, but my dad figured he might as well drive all the way to the driveway. Should be good now. Now my dad's making me dig because all this water is building up and going into the alfalfa. So I'm just gonna dig a little drain. That way it'll go into this ditch right here. Nothing like shoveling in the rain. Much better. Oh, I got a spot down there. I gotta get. Heading back home. There's the vineyard, even though you can't see it. <laughs> oh, right now it is just slow, but it seems like when I'm slow, I pack my schedule with even more things to do. And does anyone else do that? It's like my schedule frees up. So apparently I just start booking more things. But anyways, out here this morning, taking care of all the chickens. These ladies have finished their 30 day quarantine. When I get new chickens, I keep them separated for 30 days. When I first got chickens, I had some and I went and picked some other ones up and I just threw them all in together. And those new ones had a sickness and I lost a lot of chickens. It was the most heartbreaking and painful thing for me because it was just like, when was I gonna lose the next one? And it was like, once they started showing signs, I'd bring them in the house and then within a day or two, they would die. And I actually ended up, as soon as one started showing signs, I ended up taking it to UC Davis and having it tested. And they told me, yes, it had a disease. So that was a very hard lesson for me if you guys have chickens and you have two flocks you want to mix together i highly recommend doing a 30-day quarantine if you can have two chicken coops i've been very lucky so i've got 10 ladies here and i tonight i'm gonna put them all in this coop i don't know if it's true or not but i've always been told at nighttime when your flock is in the coop getting ready to go to bed you just put in the other ones and then they all wake up together. There is a pecking order when it comes to chickens. So if I throw all those ladies in there right now, there could be, you know, some fighting and I don't want anyone to get beat up. So I think tonight I'm going to make the move. It has been muddy out here. I've just pulled that water out because look how gross it looks. I threw down some straw, helped a little bit, but definitely been a little rough these ladies over here their straws holding up a little bit better if you guys saw my last video I had one um, of my rescue hens in here was looking pretty rough so she's in the house and she is definitely improving so I'm glad I brought her in the house and I'm gonna keep her there a few more days till she looks really good I'm actually going to be gone for a few days next week and AJ will be in charge of taking care of all the chickens. So today I'm also going to mix my chicken food. Um, some of you guys call it chicken trail mix and that's kind of a good name for it. I've got feed, sunflower, seed, and ground corn. So I want to get all the food containers full. I'm only going to be gone four days, but I'd rather just have them full and that way there's no chance of him running out of food for them. So we got our sunflower seed, our chicken feed, and then here's my old school grinder and there's the corn. Just saved it out of our corn harvester. Chicken trail mix.
this is our 40 by 40 shop that we play tractor Tetris. My dad just took the backhoe out and there's a tractor right there, white and red, that he might sell. So we're in the process of moving things to get it out. There it goes. She gone. One less thing. Nineteen hundred dollars profit right there so far. It's here. Oh, this is the day. It's 
beautiful. All right, Christmas came early. Ah, I got my very first tractor. I'm so excited. My very first vineyard tractor. I got it from Dolk Tractor in Rio Vista. They were so awesome. Feels surreal. If anyone is wondering about why I got a New Holland, that's my dad's and those are my dad's. We are New Holland people. And part of the reason we're New Holland people is because of the dealership. That's who's near us. And it's a great family owned business. So why wouldn't we buy from them? Look at it. Look at its beauty. Dolks knew I wanted a tractor. I mean, I wanted a tractor from day one, but there's just been nothing right that I could afford um, that kind of, you know, checked off all the boxes. And about a month ago, they knew that a tra this tractor and another one was gonna get traded in and they felt like it fit all my needs. And I went and looked at it and Little Blue, Little Blue is mine now. I'm just, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm just so happy, so happy. It's a big, big moment buying my first tractor. And they really checked every little thing. Let's see if I can. Oh. oh. It's tight in here. A little, little bit tighter than, than when I drive Big Blue. Yeah, Big, Big Blue's got a little bit more room. <laughs> I have to say the one thing I'm sad about is there's no buddy seat. All my dad's New Hollands have buddy seats. Not not quite enough room for a buddy seat in here. I do think I could possibly put a dog bed there and fit uh, one of my small dogs, but rain. I uh, I don't think rain's gonna fit. That's uh, unless you can fit right there. What do you think, rain? Can you fit? It's already <laughs> recording, so you don't even have to do. Is it recording me or you? Can you see me? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you want me to park it? Over there. Don't park it too close to mine. I don't want mine dirty. Better back off, Rain. better wash that thing. It's all mine. Go get her, Ray. I, I could live in it now. Go in the wrong direction. Good job, Dad. You're natural. He knows it's cool. He knows. Let's see it next to him. That's my dad's little tractor. <laughs> Mine's just a little smaller. Not bad. <laughs> and then these are the big boys. 
Those are the ones we use for scraping and pretty much everything to do with corn. That's the tractor I was in when I drove the bank out or the grain cart, if you watched any of my Corn Harvest 2019 videos. Wondering how difficult it will be to paint it pink or get it wrapped in pink. Look at the size difference. <laughs> I need it in pink though, I'm pretty sure. It's probably gonna happen, most likely, yes. What's the verdict? I bet you almost only use B low or B high. Which this is A, I think, and B is way over there. And that is weird, because I noticed how it was really pushing yeah. on it. You can't hardly tell. See, you can't even tell the difference in gears. Oh right? man, that is weird that it pushes like They're that. They're so close. So there she is, my baby blue, followed by no longer little blue, and big blues. We're one big happy family. My dad took that video of me driving in the tractor, and he was just giggling the whole time. That's right. So he's coming around, guys. He's coming around. Baby steps, but we're doing it. Unfortunately, I'm not really gonna be able to get all this on camera, but I am going to start moving the chickens from this coop into this coop. So I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of what I'm gonna do. Um, if I can record it, we'll see. Okay, looks like these guys are all in bed already. Chain the door open. And I do have a light in here. All right, so here's the inside of my chicken coop. I'm gonna move these ladies and my plan is to put the 10 new girls all here with their face this way. That way there's not any pecking going on. There's my omelet automatic chicken coop door that I'm so happy with. All right, everybody. You're gonna be getting some new guests here. All right. I'm just gonna do the first little lady. She's probably like, what is going on? So this is the new girl. I actually moved them and put her here and the time I could grab my camera, they moved down and she moved up. This girl right here is super mean. She pecks me, she'll peck other chickens. So I'm hoping I moved her enough out of the way, but I'm gonna go ahead and get them moved in here as quickly as I can and I'll, I'll try to show you guys. You stay in there. Okay, so everyone's in here. And uh, we're gonna see how it goes tomorrow. But they're all in. She's like, um, what am I doing in here, mom? It's okay, baby. It's okay. The goal is really to make the move to the big coop as least stressful as possible. So hopefully by putting them in at nighttime, they all wake up together. Um, over the next couple days, I'll be able to kind of supervise, make sure everyone's getting along and we'll see how it goes. But hopefully they've seen each other through the fence enough that everyone will get along. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you're new here, I'm Tara. I'm a fifth generation farmer in Northern California and this channel is all about my farming and homesteading journey. If you're liking my videos, please hit the thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button. It means so much to me and I'll see you guys soon.